Jimmy K here, Metal Voice. Look at this. The Metal Voice shirts are now on sale. Just go to the video description to find out on how you can purchase one. Metal! Welcome to the Metal Voice. Alan, it's been too long. It's yes, been too yes, long with Todd. One of our greatest interviews ever, I think, was with Todd Latore himself, and we're honored to have him back with us today. Yeah, yeah. I think we, good, I think we did like a four-hour interview with him once. <laughs> <laughs> we just could have talked like the whole afternoon. <laughs> hey, I got the gift of gab. <laughs> hey, good news. Yep, good February news. 5th, Jim, what's it coming? Rejoice in the suffering on Rat Pack Records, February the 5th. Pre-order now. Yeah. Very exciting news, very exciting news. All right. Tell us about the album. Just tell us about the album. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're talking about anyways. <laughs> tell us about the recording process of the album, Todd. All right, I'll keep things more concise for you so I don't answer 10 questions with one answer. All right, all right. <laughs> um, the, the short version is my friend Craig and I um, wrote and recorded the album here in Florida between my studio and his in about a four month period. We wrote the music and recorded everything. And then uh, and we gave the recordings to Zeus, who you mm -hmm. know from doing all the work with Queensryche and other artists. And so he did the mixing and the mastering. And uh, that was, you know, right when COVID started and the lockdown happened we flew home from two canceled shows and i called him and said hey this is the time because you know we've talked for several years now we've talked about the solo record <laughs> and i said i gotta get it done now this Talk, is back to 2017 we talked I know. about that so and you place a little clip of it you're talking about like you know three four years now right? i know yeah so that's that's the short version is the recording process was done here, we had some get togethers in person, but because of the distancing thing and not knowing about the situation, um, you know, we did it between both of our home studios and that was it. It was, it was really simple, to be honest. All right. All right. Yeah, I mean, it, and who, ahead, just for, you know, let's start, who, who plays the instruments? I mean, you're doing the singing, you're doing the drums, I imagine. And, and Craig does other? all the guitars and bass and he does uh, any keys primarily like atmospheric sounds and just like a little bed of some some notes and stuff underneath um and yeah so just the two of us did the whole all everything um we do, did have a guest solo um on the title track where jordan ziff came in and uh he played the second half of the solo to rejoice in the suffering and was this okay so again you mentioned covid did this kind of help you or hurt you in this whole solo project thing? Or sort of like, hey, this is a great opportunity to like get this done. It was a great opportunity to get it done. I mean, there was no touring for the foreseeable future. We didn't, you know, then you didn't really know. Yeah. And I remember saying like, um, this is going to be, we're going to be down for a long time, like months and months and months. And at the time, you know, there were a lot of people around us saying, you know, I'll, you know, in a month or so, we'll, we'll be back in the swing. I was like, no, dude, this is, this is gnarly. You know, I was watching uh, Dr. Michael Osterholm on a Joe Rogan podcast when he mm -hmm. wasn't really doing any stuff on the, on TV. And, you know, he's an expert in this. And so I was listening and I was like, this, this, this looks really bad for a million reasons. But I thought, okay, I'm never home for, any real length of time and it's hard to focus on this stuff like when you're only home for a week and you're like okay i gotta go back to these songs and i was just i told craig i was like this is the time right now and every single day i woke up and we just worked on the music and recorded and and we got it done but yeah i i can i just considered it as a a, a, a an opportunity that i'm never going to get again to have this kind of isolated downtime to just focus on this so can we get to the title like rejoice in the suffering like what does that come from so that was the first song that was that was ever written so that that one song was written many years ago actually 
there was only that was the only completed song prior to the March recording or set uh, start start of the songwriting sessions, and that was written um, about my dad's suicide and wow. the turmoil that was surrounding that personally with certain family dynamics that were really not good. And so that was my, you know, to the to individuals in the situation. Um, so yeah, there's a couple songs. And initially I thought, you know, maybe I'm gonna write a concept album about, about my dad and about, you know, that whole situation. And it ended up, I, I ended up not doing that. But then Apology, which is really what I consider the last track of the album itself, one through 10 is what yeah. I consider the main record. Um, that's also, that song is, is if I were in his, like his last day through his eyes, experiencing his very last day. Wow. So that song's about, about my dad also. Um, so that title without getting into too many details, that's essentially what it's surrounding is, is, uh, is that situation. I mean, Apology for me is one of the strongest songs on the album. I mean, just your vocals on that could be right off of the warning, right? I mean, it's just the, the emotion that you have in there just brings me right back to that time period. Yeah, I, I really like that song a lot. And, uh, you know, when, when a few years ago, Craig and I had Rejoice in the Suffering song done, and then we had, um, I had a verse, I had an idea for the intro singing part, but I had the verse and like part of the chorus done. And then I had a little snippet, like a one little verse of pretenders done. And I think that was it. And so everything starting in March, aside from the ones I just said, was all finishing apology, finishing pretenders. And then re we wrote all everything starting in March. So essentially I say the record really was kind of written and recorded in four months with the exception of those two pieces I told you. Hmm. I really like Apology. I think it's a good closer, um, even though you do have the bonus tracks. Um, again, as, as one through 10, I think it, it's a nice ending and it's really emotional that, that, last, that last verse, you know, where I'm singing in the higher register, you know, I, sometimes I hear it and I get goosebumps because it's wow. like, you know, you don't get you don't get to say goodbye. You don't, you know. It's just you get the phone call and you realize, you know, that they killed themselves. And yeah. it's like you you're left with trying to, like, fuck, dude, you didn't even say goodbye. You know, hopefully people can even if they don't know what it's about. And I was really reluctant, you guys. You know, when I did this, I was thinking, you know, I know people are going to ask me about the title and what does that mean, and do I want to explain what it means? Cause it's really personal. And do I want to explain what apology means? Somebody can say, well, but you're putting it out there for everyone to hear what, you know, it's natural to ask, why would you not want to, but sometimes that's my, it's my way of bleeding out. It's my, yeah. it's, you know what Your I mean? Therapy. It's my yeah. therapy. And, yeah. uh, and so, so I feel okay with explaining some of the things I've said to you and yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, it's, it, it's it's a sad reality for a lot of people. Get to uh, some more positive news Let's here. It. Like, it's just unbelievable the amount of, I, if I can use the term, voices that you use on this album. It's you know, Dogmatis starts it off. I think I counted like six different influence or different types of voices just in that yeah. song alone. You know, the vo Plus, vocal Olympics, basically. That's what it is. <laughs> some, some guy. Uh, so a friend, a friend of mine, um, he heard, you know, the first song we put out was Dark and Majesty. And he, it, <laughs> and he messaged me, he goes, how does someone have a duet with themselves? Yeah. <laughs> <With themselves?" Yeah. laughs> like, that song, like but Cinderella. You know what? I mean, it's like, the, this is how I've been singing for so long on my own, various ways, you know, and people will say like, oh man, he, he you know, you're, you're, you're a chameleon. You can mimic and sound like so many different things. But at the same time, you know, people are like, but what does he sound like? It's like, you know what I sound like? All this stuff. 
because I sing with whatever the song makes me feel like it wants. So, it, you know, I, I really kind of contest that type of a response as far as like, a, okay, well, obviously he doesn't sound anything like Queensryche on this. So he's trying to sound like that in Queensryche. And I say, well, when Michael writes a song and it sounds like Queensryche, I'm going to write it. I'm going to phrase things that way. I'm going to, it's just the way that it is. And, but, Pretend, you know, but, but I got to say pretenders, hold on, just not to cut you off, but pretenders. Yeah, go ahead. I know what you're going to say. Let's talk about Rob <laughs> Halford. You, you got the rolling of the, you know, the rolling of the R's, you know, like the, the Rob Halford, you know. Yeah. And, and I mean, I, you know, I notice these little nuances and sure it's got that role, but maybe that song made you feel like painkiller or something, right? Like Totally. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's like saying, uh, oh, he did a finger tap. You know, you're Eddie Van Halen now. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, he's not yeah. the only guy to trill an R. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? But I mean, you know, another singer that's a friend of the show, Stu Block with Ice Earth. I mean, I know you've Stu. got the death vocals on here too, right? On the bonus track. Yeah. And he's, he's famous for doing these types of things as well. I mean, it's still so amazing. I, I told Stu, I texted him one time, like I had watched him do, I think it was Painkiller on the 70,000 Tons. And then he hits this note that's to the stratosphere. And I was like, I think I texted him and I was like, what the F? Like, WTF, <laughs> dude. God damn, you're pissing me off. I wish I could <laughs> sing like that. You know? Yes. We call them freaks a... of nature. That's what we call it. Yeah. It's awesome. I mean, it's awesome. But, but you know, but I, I mean... do have other textures and other sounds to my voice that people don't get to hear because, again, I'm never going to put that stuff in Queensryche. I mean, there's some songs in Queensryche like, like Hellfire, okay? There's a line in there, it's like, uh, you know, piercing screams in my head. And it's, you know, the octave higher that I do. That's totally like what I would sing on a Pretenders or something like that. But that's just a little piece. Yeah. You know, people's like, oh, it sounds like Overkill in Vanguards of the Don Wall. I love, I love Overkill. I love that kind of delivery. And so when I heard that, you know, that thrash thing, I was like, okay, this doesn't need flowy, melodic, clean. This needs harsh, shrill, percussive phrasings. And, you know, so that's what I did. <laughs> you know, well, we could, go, uh, ahead. go ahead, Jeff. No, I, I just thought we'd throw out a few song titles of what my impressions are. And maybe you can just add to it as we go along. Maybe Let's do it. All right, so I got uh, Crossroads to Insanity. For me, that's like Queensryche meets Tony Martin era Sabbath, you know? That's true, I, yeah. It's a good one. We, we wrote that song in two days. Um, and and, and we, have, uh, we have a video for that song that's coming out uh, so, very soon that will surprise you. And uh, I love that song, you know? Yeah. It's, it's uh, you know... It, it gets to show a lower register in the verses, which I love. It shows Craig's uh, solo work that's very melodic. I mean, such a good player. And then, you know, the ending, when we did that ending, it kind of reminded me of Planet Caravan, right? <laughs> and I was like, you know, okay, I'm kind of hearing this. I, I like this clean ending. It's not expected. Let's just do that and let it fade out. And so, yeah, that's one of my favorite songs. I think that'll be a favored song among the, the people that do get to hear the record. I, I agree. Along with Apology, I think those are my two favorites on the track as well, on the album. So Thanks. Critical Cynic, just you go drums crazy on that song, I mean? So that song was started, um, I called Craig, and I was like, hey, you know, I'm feeling like a... So get, uh, you know, this is what I'm feeling write something in that kind of a groove. You're on the phone with him. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm drum talking because I'm really good at that. And I said, and I said, uh, I said, this is, this is what I'm feeling. But now there's a middle section. Oh, wait, is that the song? Hold on. Uh, no, that's another song. We'll, we'll I'll tell you that part oh, later. Yeah, but okay. anyway, Critical Cynic, um, you know, I, that was when the stupid plan Demic, dumic, whatever the fuck it's called. This stupid, you know, conspiracy theory crap about the virus and everybody. And I was like, I was so irritated with people here whining about wearing a mask and you're infringing on my freedoms and all this crap. And uh, and that song was written about 
the 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 science deniers. That's what it's mm. written about. So even the chorus, you know, how will we know with disbelief? How can we grow when we can't see? Criticize positions, dishonor those who know. What's to gain, make of all this madness? Yada yada. But you've got people that have spent their life, you know, in higher learning when it used to be revered and coveted and respected and trusted. And now people are like, well, I did my research. You didn't research anything. <laughs> research you, happens at a laboratory. You, you, want, you want a note? Here's a note on the masks from right. my cousin who's an infectious disease doctor. And just throwing it out there because I know you're interested in this stuff. Yeah. He says that if we have, if I wear a mask and you wear a mask and I have, I have the coronavirus, let's say, and it, and it comes out of my mask, minuscule, right? Like sure. tiny bit. Yeah, very small. And then a very small goes into your mask. It's like actually having a vaccine. Okay. Is that great? Is that, that's, that's kind of what they're thinking. That's what the mask can actually do. They filter it out to a point where it's so tiny Mm. that it's like a live vaccine that your body will fight against, but you won't actually get too sick. Right. Yeah. So the viral load is so small, but enough that your body will respond in a way that can be beneficial to you. To create the antibodies that you need to fight off a bigger dose of it. Is that fascinating? But I just thought I'd throw that out there. No, it's fascinating, you know, but, (laughs) but Anyway, that song, um, Alan, was was uh, was written about surrounding that that topic. Okay. Then we had right. Vexed. I mean, for me, he's got a nice acoustic intro, but he's got an '80s feel to that song. That one like that. does that, and, and you know that it, the intro to that song is is Queen's The delivery on that vocal is very much in what I would do in Queen's because that's what I felt right. Um, and that's another, that's another song. I was outside on my porch and my mailman came up and he's a really cool guy. And he's like, oh, still no shows. Cause you know, we talk a lot. And I said, no, you know, and I was just like really irritated. Right. And I'm like, man, I got to get out of here. And, and Jimmy knows that, you know, I want to go to Greece one day, you know, relo- relocate there like seriously. And, uh, and, uh, and so that started that because every night I go out and I, and I look at the stars every night before I go to bed. I always go out and I look up at the stars. And that's what that intro is, you know, uh, talks about that. And, and it's it's just a nation in distress. We are, yeah, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm pissed off. And um, so that that has to do with kind of the current times, if you will. Yeah. So so Vex has got the 80s metal feel. I mean, fractured for me. Is kind of like '90s, kind of grungy, Alice in Chains kind of feel. So, and you know what? That's that's my least favorite among all of them. To be honest, it was like, eh, it's okay. But you know, initially we were going to have bonus tracks for different territories. To be honest, and I was like, okay, one through ten is the main record. I said I, I want to have a special track for Japan. Maybe I'll have a separate bonus track for the U.S. and one for Europe. And then at the end, it was like, you know what? I'm just going to put everything out for everybody because, because there are times, like when we did uh, Condition Human, there's the song Mercury Rising. There's Espiritu Muerto. There's different songs that nobody's ever heard. They're in Japan. You, you've never heard it. It's on a seven-inch vinyl. You don't even know wow. it exists. And I said, and you can't find it, by the way, but... We, we have three songs that are great Queensryche songs that most people have never heard. And they were released legit. And I said, you know what? No, these were going to be bonus tracks. We'll just make them extra goodies at the end of the record. If people can like it or not like it, whatever. All right. But yeah, you're, that's a really good assessment, Alan, because it totally has, has that kind of a sound. I mean, I, you know, we're a little bit older and the grunge movement, either we were loved it or we hated it. And, and it just it just had that feel to yeah, me. It, and then D- Dark and Majesty, you know, for me, that Cinderella meets Alice Cooper, another very strong song on the album. Yeah, I, I would say that's, you know, the chorus is definitely more Crimson Glory. Um, yeah. And and the verses remind me um, kind of more of like a fight. Uh, overkillish you know it's got that good head banging groove and it's and then it opens up to a nice melodic chorus uh, if that track had a lot has a lot of things in it and i think that was why i was like you know what if i just put out something that's too out there the initial base that i have of listenership um 
they may they I want them to connect with some element of of a song and this is a chorus I think they might appreciate but but I'm really going for a demographic that maybe doesn't even know who I am to get into more of that the heavier audience where it's like uh, I've heard of the guy but maybe they don't listen to Queen Drake for example um, and and so I'm really trying to just broaden broaden that uh, viewership or listenership to let people know, hey, I, I can do a lot of stuff here. I'm not just just this guy over here. You know, there is a lot of down tuning. There's a lot of, uh, mm -hmm. there's industrial elements as well, right? It's a heavier album, like you just said. It is a, overall a heavier album than any Queen's right album, right? Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's, I mean, it, I don't, cons it's not like crazy heavy, but it's like heavy in a in a classic sense, yes. in a thrash sense. The the Mesa Boogie guitars, I mean, the guitars are very biting and kind of they're very present, which I was like, Craig's guitars are so good and his rhythms are, they need to stand out. And we don't want a bunch of layered guitars. We want to keep it two rhythms and that's it and make it. And and to be honest, when, when we were doing this, I was like, I was like, dude, you know what I miss? I miss hearing this a stripped down sound like fight like overkill where you don't have so many layers of guitar it's just simple classic metal right to the point you're not having to sift through all these different elements to like understand the riff i was like i want to keep it very simple i'm not trying to reinvent anything new i just want to do what m music that i like to hear in my car and songs that make me want to headbang and groove to, that's what I want to write. And I don't, I don't, honestly, I'm like, I don't care if anybody likes it or doesn't like it. I mean, you want people to like it, but if people don't connect with it, the whole objective for me was to like have the outlet. Yeah. Well, that brings me to the next two songs. I mean, that's for me, it's stripped down heavy metal, classic Hellbound and Down and Vanguards of the Dark uh, Wall. I mean, though, for me, that's just a classic sound, just like you described it. Yeah, I mean, Hellbound and Down has has a little has a gr a good groove like Pantera. It's got yeah. the guitars on that are are kind of Pantera ish. Yeah. You know, it's got like a little bit of that southern sound. The the riffs in, in the verses to Hellbound and Down. Then it's a, a very you know straightforward double bass classic chorus. Then you have this cool breakdown. You know, where I, I get into this, you know, walls of blood are burning, that whole thing with the, the, the Tom work and his guitars reminded me of Slayer, you know, oh, in, in that. So instead of singing there, you know, how do you end up here? You know, I was doing more of that as like a like a Tom Araya type of a delivery. Like, I don't want to sing here. I just want to vocalize uh, an attitude here. Um so and, and yeah, Vanguards of the Dawn Wall is just a straight up thrash tune, you know? Yeah. So, okay. So you have this album. It's yeah. being released. The yeah. pandemic is pretty much still in play. You can release videos and all, right? But I mean, I, I don't know. Florida is how open it is. I guess I'm hearing it's kind of open. The Wild West, dude. It's, it's stupid. Yeah. I, but can you play a show open? Is, is Florida open enough yeah. to do a show? Steel people Panther do just came through town. Steel yeah. Panther played here. Yeah. Jet State played here. Co Collective Soul played here. I mean, yeah, people are playing and, dude, it's out of control in wow. Florida. But are you going to be playing or are you saying, no, wait a second, I'm waiting until this is over? I mean, wait, I'm plans? not doing anything right now. No I mean, way. There's I liability, know. I would assume, with fans and there's liability with... It's just, uh, yeah, I'm just, I mean, you know what? I, I would, I would assemble a group of players that are my buddies that are my friends that are also known um i've already had some conversations you know with some people that are very well known be like hey you know I, if i were to go play some shows a handful of, i'm not going to be like on tour doing all this stuff but like if i could go to europe and play five you know a handful of festivals and come home I, I would be like, I would love to do that with this music. Queensryche always comes first. That's the bottom line. It's always mm -hmm. going to come first. It's always going to take precedent. But if like, if one of those bands came through town and it was like, 
hey, you know, you can you can get the opening slot or something. I'd be like, hell yeah, I want to go. I do want to play some shows on this at some point, but I want it to be right. So, but as far as like right now, <clears throat> there's no way I would I would risk myself or um or or have a reason for people to gather unnecessarily. I consider it unnecessary right now. Yeah. And look, I haven't worked in 11 months. Wow. Zero. Zero zero paycheck from touring in 11 months. Okay? I'm still not going to go do it until it until the protocols are established and put in place and I trust the situation and it's going to be with Queen Drake first. So yeah. are, are you, are you finishing material for like a new, now with this, all this free time, are you guys like writing material for a new album? Oh, yeah, not? yeah, yeah, yeah. Michael, Michael flew down uh, recently a week or two ago and Zeus came down and then Casey lives here. So he was coming over every day. We recorded 14, 15 new song ideas. Nice. Wow. And then nice. he's coming, Michael's coming back down again um, in like a month or so. So we're writing new Queensryche stuff. Good. And, and Zeus is recording it in real time as we're in a room coming up with fresh ideas on the fly. Um, Eddie and Parker, they may come down. It depends. Parker slammed with his guitar shop. Um, he has a shop called Diablo Guitars, and he's just like, you know, exploding. Things are going great for him. And Eddie's songwriting at home, and he doesn't feel safe traveling right now. So that's why he didn't come down then. And I, I said, dude, I totally respect it, and I yeah, get it. For sure. Absolutely. But yeah, we're working on new stuff. How about a live yeah. album with your, your era, you know, sort of. In, yeah, in, in that any... would be nice. We have, we have, we have tons of multi-track recordings from two years of live shows. And I, and I told Eddie, you know, I think Michael has the hard drives. Why don't we divvy up, send hard drives to each of us and we'll pick three songs. Each guy yes. gets three songs. Cause you've got a you know, 2000 song, you know, things to go through. And I'll, I'll pick three songs and like, I'll just find the best live performances from those three songs. And maybe we can assemble 15 songs or something for a live record. So I'm, I mean, that's something we are talking about. I guess he's been listening to songs and sifting through some of that material from uh, live performances. So okay. we'll see. All right. So, well, Todd, it's always a pleasure to speak to you. We should do this more often. And a great yeah. congratulations. It's a really solid and, and strong album. I, I, the more I listen to it, the more I discover new things, and it's Thank thoroughly you. enjoyable. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I, I hope that um, that people dig it. And you know, I was um, did a nice four page layout in Ard Shock, and, and uh, actually got album of the month. Hey, yeah, you know, that's well great, deserved. Todd. Your album is is great i Thanks, really buddy. enjoyed it as well as much as alan enjoyed it we we're kind of texting each other back and forth saying oh my god this is amazing thank you guys <laughs> all right That's we know you've got another me. interview we know you know and so pick it up everybody pre-order now rejoice in the suffering february 5th via rat pack via via rat pack records there we go